What's going on guys? I'm Liz from Learn Robotics and welcome to this week's episode of Learn Robotics Live. This is the free online course where you can learn how to build with robots, electronics, and prototypes and create your own devices from scratch. In last week's episode, we took a look at the beginnings of Internet of Things by publishing some information to an online website. And in this episode, we're going to take information from a website and use it to control some local devices. So sit back, relax. This is episode number eight. It's the season finale of Learn Robotics Live. Woo! The cool things about doing these videos is you just get to see my face. So like I mentioned in last week's episode, we took a look at how to publish information using a Wemos D1 Mini which is an ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. We took data from a potentiometer and data from an LDR or a light sensor, and we published it up to Dweet IO. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to take this device, we're going to publish some data to Dweet IO, and now I've got a second device, which is a Node MCU, which also has an ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip, and we're going to receive data from the first device to control some LEDs. So let's head over to the computer and I'll show you how to get started. So what we're looking at right now is the file that we worked on last week where we took information from the Wemos D1 Mini, the potentiometer data, and the LDR data, and we sent that up to the Dweet IO website. And so if you'd like a copy of this project file, you can head on over to learnrobotics.org live and enroll in the free robotics course head to episode number seven, and you can rewatch the episode and download this file. So basically what we're gonna do, because it's a little bit confusing, I wanna walk through this model here. And essentially what we've got going on is we've got this device, the first Wemos D1 Mini, is going to be reading data from the sensor, which is a potentiometer. It's going to do an analog read on A0, and then once it's on A0, it's going to take that A0 value, store it into a temporary variable, and then that information is gonna be pushed up to the Dweet IO website, and it's gonna be stored under the thing name Wemos. So this side of it is complete. Now we are sitting inside of Dweet IO, and we're looking at the thing named Wemos, and essentially what we're gonna do is take the second device, and we're gonna say, hey, go fetch the data under the name Wemos. And based on the value, we're gonna to toggle one of these LEDs so we can set thresholds for what constitutes a red value, a yellow value, and a green value, and then turn the light on accordingly. So let's head over to the software and start looking at how to receive data from the Dweet IO website. And I will say that using, uh, <laughs> using Arduino to parse JSON files is not super easy. So we are going to be using an auxiliary library that is the Arduino JSON library. Super convenient to use for a project like this because it kind of gives you a little bit of you know, functionality that you would naturally just have in Python. So if you want to check that out, I will leave that in the project notes inside of the free course and I'll also leave a link below this video if you're watching on YouTube. So yeah, let's head on over to the computer again and try to get this thing uh, working. So we're done with this file. Once you have it added to your Wemos D1 Mini, you can kind of set the Wemos aside. You can honestly even just unplug it because we don't even really need to run it on the computer and we can even just power it off of a five volt wall wart. Um, and what we can do, let's just exit out of this. We are going to take a look at this Dweet catcher code, which basically will connect to your network we're going to give it the network name, the password, and then we're just going to start defining some hardware. So we've got um, all of our LEDs. So you're going to need to wire up three LEDs. Don't forget your resistors. I've got three LEDs with three 330 ohm resistors. You can probably get away with like anything around 100 ohms is probably fine. Um, just wire yourself up with three LEDs, put them on three open digital pins. If you're confused about what that means, head on over to learnrobotics.org and check out my um, Arduino for Beginners course. It's very basic information on getting started with Arduino. So we've got three LEDs. The first one will do the red, and the red is gonna be on pin three. And 
and we've got yellow and that's going to be on two and then we've got green which is going to be on one and what i want to do is go down to setup and just set all of these so we've got red uh, yellow and green and this is just telling the pin that we're going to use it as an output and that looks pretty good and so for the node MCU, make sure that when you're defining your pins, you're giving it a number and not an identifier like a D3. Um, the Wemos D1 Mini uh, will not compile, I believe, if you don't include that prefix. But for the node MCU, it'll actually throw an error if you use it. So something to note. And why don't we go ahead and define some thresholds here. So I'm just going to put in a comment and just say these are going to be our LED thresholds. Um, and so what we could do is call this float red limit and that's going to be, let's just make that, uh, let's make it 500 and we'll do a float yellow limit and that's going to be, uh, we'll make that 850 and then let's do float um, green limit that's uh, going to be 1023, just so that we have it. And we may only need two of these, um, but just so that we have them available. In previous um, tests of this code, I was collecting 10 samples of data and then storing them into an array. You can choose to do that or not. We may just um, do everything in real time and just send one piece of data or just collect one piece of data and then do the comparison. So there's really no need. Um, so let's, I may end up actually just, let's just add that in just so we have it. So let's just do the value is going to end up being the reading. So we'll just do 10 readings. And our host name is again going to be tweet.io. We're going to set up a Wi-Fi client. Um, if you're using the tweet.io um, there's a library out there for Arduino. It's not very great at parsing JSON. So if you want to be able to actually do things other than pulling strings off of Dweet.io, you should try to do it this way. Use the JSON library that I'm using in this project. It'll make things so much easier. So here's what we're gonna do now. We've got ourselves connected to the internet. We've got all of our pins set up. We're gonna go and collect some readings. And basically what we're gonna do is I've just have it set to run a certain number of iterations. And if we're not at that number of iterations, we're gonna keep running. And then if we are, then we're done running. So we've basically got a set of 10 iterations and then it just prints out some of the data that we've pulled off of the website. And we connect, we connect to Dweet.io at port 80. And if we can't connect, we say that we've failed. And then what we're gonna end up doing is we're going to get the latest tweet for, and you're gonna to need to update this to whatever the name of the device is. And we're going to collect the readings from the Wemos page, and they're gonna be in a JSON format. So we'll go to this URL on the Node MCU, and then we'll pull this JSON file. We will use the JSON, Arduino JSON library to help parse the JSON format and clean it up. And what we'll do is we'll use this uh, JSON v6 assistant tool. What we can do is just copy in the JSON format that we're trying to receive from our device, paste it into this cool little online utility, and it'll tell us the array size, the object size, and then the additional bytes that we need for our controller. So that's where we got this line of code right here plus the 248 for the ASP8266. So then what we gotta do is we parse the JSON object and to extract the values, they actually give you the parsing program right here. So you can just copy this in and I've updated the um, variable name by calling it pop position. And that's just gonna get to the raw value of the position and we'll print that out on the serial monitor. So basically all we need to do is open up the serial monitor and we can open up the Dweet.io webpage that we're pulling from. 
And this runs um, 10 times. So what we can do is just go ahead and reset it. And it should show that we are sitting at 1024 right now. And what we can do is we can change this. So we should be seeing it update in two places. We should see it update on the Wemos um, object on Dweet.io. And then we should also see it update on our Node MCU. And so this serial monitor is running locally off of the USB. This Wemos is running off of just power and it's connected to the internet and it's sending data up. So let me drop this all the way down. And so what we can do is we basically, these two devices are talking to each other through an intermediary on this Dweet.io URL. So I think it's a very powerful tool. What we're going to do now is we're going to use this information to toggle these LEDs so that they turn on when we're between certain thresholds. So to do that, we are going to go through and just clean out some of this information. I'm just gonna go in and modify this. And what we can do is set the LED state. So we can say if the um, pot position, position is less than or equal to our red limit, we can digital write the red LED high. And then what I'll do is I'll do a quick little serial print line just saying that um, the red LED is on. Don't forget your parentheses. And what we can do is do an else. Um, if the position is less than or equal to the yellow limit, we can do the digital yellow high, and then we can do a serial print line saying that the yellow LED is on. And then what we can do, just update this name, else, if none of those conditions are met, we will do a digital write on the green LED and a serial dot print line. Uh, we can do a green LED on. And it might actually be best to just do another else if and just say we are position is greater than the yellow limit. Then what we can do is we can use the final else to just shut everything off. Digital, right, red, low, digital, right, yellow, low. Actually, it might make more sense if we just shut off the colors that don't need to be on. Digital, right, yellow, low. Digital, right, red, low. Digital, right, green, low. Because we don't know what the previous state is on these LEDs. Red, low. Digital, right, yellow, low. Digital, right, green, low. Okay. So that will toggle that. So basically we've got the code running with the updated pin references. And so I just use the GPIO pinouts for this. Um, I used the original like pin, the D pins written on the board, but some boards you actually have to use the GPIO pins. So it's saying right now that we are at 585, which is roughly what we're reading on the node MCU and let's go ahead and collect another 10 readings. So we should say 584. Perfect yellow LED on. 
So let's go ahead and try to get under 500. And so then we can toggle the red LED. And as we test this out, we get ourselves a nice little red LED that turns on. We are under 500. Let's go all the way up past the 800 threshold, try to get around 1024 and turn that green LED on. So you got a nice little green LED on. And this is like how powerful the Internet of Things is. It's a really cool way of taking two different devices and getting them to talk to each other so that you can do a variety of different tasks, collect a bunch of data, and just show visualizations. Super powerful in industry for creating prototypes. It's used in home automation and other projects. This is how you take information from one controller, publish it to a cloud, and pull data and receive it and make decisions on another device. That's it for this week's episode of Learn Robotics Live. I hope you guys had an awesome time making your own Internet of Things devices. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And this episode also wraps up the whole season of Learn Robotics Live, meaning season one is over. I know it's awful. I'm not going to see you guys next Friday. But stay tuned. Season two of Learn Robotics Live will be out sometime in 2020. But if you did miss any of the previous episodes, there are seven full length episodes where you can make your own robotics, electronics and programming projects. So if you want access to that, head on over to learnrobotics.org live. Sign up for the free robotics course where you'll gain immediate access to course replays project files, and downloads so you can get a head start on all of these projects. I'm Liz from Learn Robotics. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join me for this week's lesson, and I will see you in Season 2 of Learn Robotics Live. Woo! We did it!